Welcome, collectors. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Diecast Emporium. You may recall back in the spring and early summer, I started a new series on this channel called The Quarantine Files, aka the collection update videos, wherein I took a specific type of heavy equipment and showed you every single one that I had in 150th scale. We're going to conclude that series, at least for now, with showing you my entire lineup of 150th scale motor graders. So, these are in somewhat of an order, and the first one that I'm going to show you is the only grader in my entire collection that is not a Caterpillar grader. And uh, it's kind of an interesting oddball piece, and that is the First Gear Komatsu GD 655-5 motor grader, a.k.a. the Snow Grader. So, First Gear released this a number of years ago, and they did a bunch of different versions. They did a standard grader, obviously this version, which is the Snow Grader. They did a, mun a municipal grader. Um, they also did one in like fire red, green, white, and, uh, it's, it's a very detailed, it's a very functional piece. The, the one thing that this thing has going for it is that it's very easy to build a diorama around it because it's so functional and it has a V plow in the front, which I believe you can take off and separate from the front of the grader. Again, I'm not that interested in doing that because it's me and I'll probably get overzealous and potentially break something. Not interested in doing that, especially on camera. Um, but I know this part works and then the uh, wing plow or blade, that comes down and that works well. There's no resistance there. Um, and you can swing it out or swing it in. As you can see, the cylinder going in and out there. And as far as from some fine details go, there's even some tiny antennas and a nice warning light up on top. So I wanted to buy one of these and add it to my collection a couple years ago because it reminds me of home. Growing up in western New York, you would occasionally see these uh, on the throughways, which is what we call highways up there. And um, <clears throat> you would occasionally see these in wintertime, clearing lake effect snow. And... Uh, Kind of just reminds me of home. I also had the intention of removing the snow tidbits and the like and putting it on one of the cat graders. And then I realized that, once again, I'm going to throw this out. It's me, and um, I am not a model customizer <laughs> or a modifier. And uh, I would probably not only mess up this model, but also whatever cat model I would put this on. So... That project has been shoved to the back burner and probably will never happen. Uh, but it's an interesting piece, and you know, if you're into snow removal equipment and you don't already own this in your collection, it's worth checking out. All right, this model will probably be one of the most popular in the entire video. I know it's a favorite of mine. This is the Diecast Masters Caterpillar Diesel Number no. 12 Grader. This is to date currently only available in the uh, Cat Grader Evolution or Evolution set. And I say this time and time again, every time we talk about these sets, guys, it's so worth it. Um, you get two models, you get a ring bound book that's chock full of information, great color photos. Um, this particular one, you learn all about the different companies that became that, that Caterpillar bought to get a greater line. Um, it's just awesome, simply put. Technically, these models are meant to stay on the plastic base that they come with, but you can remove them because it's only on there by two uh, Phillips screws. So I elected to take it off just for just for this video. Uh, the umbrella is error correct because this grader is supposed to represent 1939 to 1959. Um, you also have Sir, you also have Grandpa Bob, what I like to call the older figures for the Evolution Series cat models. He's standing up proudly, uh, not giving a hoot about um, basic safety laws back then, obviously. And there's clearly no ROPS protection, just just the aforementioned umbrella. And the, the model is very simplistic because the, the machine was very simplistic. You had the blade, you had the wheels that turned, you had, you know, the rear wheels, which those oscillate as well. They replicated the joysticks up here and the steering wheel that would operate everything. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a great, 
great model. It really is. And the Cat number 12 grader is such a famous piece of... Forget construction equipment. It's it's a famous piece of engineering. Um, and, and I think the book alludes to this as well. There are so many American roads that this machine can be attributing to, to help building and uh, to help pave the way to connecting America. So very important piece of equipment. Okay. Next, we have the Norscott 140H. Very, very, very famous and popular model. And I say that because this is the original made by Norscott in 1998. I'm filming this video towards the end of 2020, and it is still in the Diecast Masters lineup as a Core Classics model. Uh, that's going on, well, well over 20 years of service. Um, it was very functional for its time. It featured working steering. The rear tires had working oscillation. The ripper worked. Um, the blade moved, the cylinders were strong enough to hold it at an angle. It really did everything you'd want a 150 scale grader model to do. And it, it just was a spectacular piece. It was so commercially successful in the collector market that they did four versions of this. This is the main one, the one that was obviously mass produced. Then Norscott, a few years later, came out with this. This is the 140H weathered version. This is a factory weathered job that Norscott did. This is not a custom. You have the mud splash marks, mud on the tires. Story goes, rumor has it, I've never seen, you know, I only have one of these, one of each of these in my collection. But the story goes that no two of these allegedly are alike because of the way the factory splashes and dirt and stuff went on it. I can't confirm that. Again, the only way I could confirm that is if I were to seek out and buy two of each of these, which I'm not going to do. Um, but that's the rumor. So that's the weathered one. Now, the two other ones I have mitten box. I've never taken them out. This is the military green or camo one. This is the Cat 140H in the in the camo colors. This is 2002, I believe. Yep, you can see it down there at the bottom right. This was a series of four. So you had a one... Let me see if I can do this by memory. You had a 140H, uh, a 980G wheel loader, 623 elevating scraper, and a bulldozer of some kind. I want to see a D8. Look at that. It's like I had no life when I was little. You want to know why? Because I had no life when I was little. Uh, not pictured is the 980G. But there were four. Not all three. There were four. And the last version, which is very rare, is this version. The Silver 140H. And this commemorates 50 years of building graders in the, in, at the Cat Factory in Decatur, Illinois. 50 years building the future. And then if you want to pause the video, for time's sake, I'm not going to read this, but go ahead and pause the video and read that if you'd like to. I know it's a little bit blurry, but you can make out the gist of it. So those are the four 140Hs. Then, a few years later... Norscott released the 140M. Updated tooling, new cat graphics with the power edge. So this is about 2007, 2009, and very much improved functionality. Now the blade would not only turn left to right, but it would also swing. And the blade could extend out, as you can see by this cylinder right here. So that's the 140M. Okay, then Diecast Masters, years later, came out with this, which in my opinion, my opinion, is one of the best grader models in 150 scale ever made. This is the 140M3 AWD, which stands for all-wheel drive. This version has the GPS pods on it. For added detail, the top pops off to add the operator figure in if you want. It even has a detailed interior with the cat logo on the back of the seat. Working ripper on the back. 
Uh, even the side windshield wipers are molded into the plastic, which mirrors the glass. And check out the hydraulic lines all over this thing. Not only going to the top of the cylinders, but also through the whole assembly here. Just incredible. Now we're going to stop here for just a minute because I want to tell you that one of the reasons why I waited for this video for now is... You can either visit my Instagram page, because by the time I post this video, I'll have it up there, or the Diecast Masters Facebook page. In 2021, they will be releasing a 150 grader, brand new, with the new cat hex design, the modern hex design, and it will look somewhat similar to this with the GPS pods and everything else, but it's going to be so awesome. I'm so pumped to have the new 150 grader. Um, I hope to have it at some point early next year to review for you guys and to add it to my personal collection. Uh, but now that it's, that it's been announced and it's official, again, you can check out the photos on my Instagram page that uh, that have been released by Diecast Masters. And again, once I get it in my collection, I will film a video and be able to show you that. All right, continuing. This is the 12 M3. So this is the first in a line of really... Um, when they, when they started, you'll, you'll see 12s, 14, 16, et cetera, et cetera. This is really the first one. Um, again, one of the first new complete toolings that Diecast Masters made. This one was so early on that they, back then they did not make the operator figure removable. Um, again, if you're not familiar, that was a request actually made by Caterpillar themselves. Um, they wanted to see how. They, they wanted a fully grown man figure inside the cab so that it was representative of how a fully grown man looked around the cap machine to scale. So that was the decision for that. That's the 12 M3. We're going to go back to Norscott just temporarily to take a look at the 14 M. Again, we're trying to stay with, with size here. So this is again, 2007. Beautiful, beautiful grader as well. Even back then, they were experimenting with adding detail, such as the grab rails up on top. It's molded into the casting and painted orange, but you have a beacon light. That was something new and revolutionary for back then. No hydraulic lines or anything for the, the cylinders or anything, but again, this is 2007. But they were starting to add warning labels back then. Now... This is marketed as a Norscott 120M. Uh, this is the second part, the second series that they released years later of the military series by Norscott, the defense series. And they, they label this a 120M. It is not a 120M. It is simply a 14M, same casting, sprayed military or desert tan. Exact same casting. So it's a 14M sprayed tan. Now... I want to stop here for one moment. As many of you know that either know me personally or follow my personal account. Uh, a few months ago, I started a brand new job. And uh, my boss presented me with a very personal gift. He was, uh, well, well, he did many things. But one of the things he did, he was in, he was in the CBs. And he presented me with this challenge coin. And it is such a personal and wonderful uh, gesture by him that I wanted to, while we were looking at this military grader, which the CBs use, uh, wanted to show you this challenge coin. It says Kuwait, Iraq, Bahrain, Afghanistan, and it has the dozer on it. Uh, the, the bulldog, which again is the, the, the mascot of the Marine Corps, um, 2010, 2011. And again, he was in the, the CBs for the Navy. And so you have the CB logo right here. It says Pack a Punch, U.S. Navy. And then their, their motto there at the bottom, Alpha Dogs, 2010-2011. What a wonderful gesture on his part. And I will cherish this on my desk, uh, in my home office, and in my collection uh, for as long as I live. So wanted to wanted to show you that um, during this segment of the video. So again... If you're not familiar with what challenge coins are, and I, I would encourage you to Google that and look it up. But um, yeah, just absolutely awesome. So there you go. All right, let's continue. Next, 
we have the Diecast Masters 14 M3. So I, I said we're going to kind of stick with the the new number designation. So we, we've seen 12s, we've seen 14s. This is now the 14 M3. Again, a Diecast Masters model as opposed to the Norscott 14 M. Now, another purpose-built casting, a lot more detail, a little bit bigger than the regular 14, too, by Norscott. Um, the tires are also a lot bigger, a lot more aggressive tread pattern. You now have hydraulic lines all over it. This cab does come off as well, so you can put the operator figure in. Here's the back. Here's the side. And again, periodic. if this is your first time watching one of these collection update videos, you probably have already noticed this, but... As some of these models come out, there'll be a little icon that pops up at the top right of the screen. That's a it's a suggested link. So this is a very brief synopsis and overview of each of these. But if you click on one of those links, it's the actual full in-depth review of each of these models. So you can click on that. If you see one of these graders that you're like, hey, that looks really cool. I want more information on it. Click on that little blip that appears and that'll take you to my review of it. So, we've seen 12s, we've seen 14s, now we're at 16. This is the 16 M3. Uh, this actually is one of the ones that came first. So again, you have the operator figure in there who is permanent. Um, wonderful, wonderful piece as well. Tons of hydraulic line detail again on here. And now we're, now we're getting to the fact that we're so big. Now we're in the mining sector. And we have to have, you know, our, our fender well protection, our fire suppression system on the back. And uh, what is that? Is this a seven shank ripper? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven shank ripper on it. Yeah. So if you like, if mining stuff is your thing, make sure you stay tuned throughout the rest of the video. So that's the 16 M3. Now we have the 18 M3. So again, continuing to go up in size. You want to talk about something that casting that they went all out in. Here's your answer. They even made the access stairs be able to fold down and up. Um, again, this top does come off. You have your fire suppression system at the back once again. And this is also a seven shank ripper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Over here. Again, all of the uh, grab rails, the handrails here. It's hard to see because they are they are black and the cab's black, but these are these are die cast metal. They're not um, they're not plastic. So again, very nice. So it, as if the 18 M3 didn't impress you enough, they released a special edition of the 18 M3. Here it is. They call it the special black onyx finish. And although it might be a little bit difficult to see on camera, it's a two-tone black finish. You have the shiny black up on top, and then kind of the uh, the, the gunmetal or the, the lighter black finish when you go down here. Same casting, same details, but just a specialty black finish that I personally think looks great and certainly is a, uh, a standout in the collection. You got all this cat yellow iron, black and yellow iron, and then you see this piece and, you know, your buddies come over and they're like, hey, tell me about the black piece. So it's a great conversation starter. Okay, so we've seen 12s, we've seen 14s, we've seen 16s, we've seen 18s. Now we get into the largest grader that cat currently produces, specifically for mining and quarry applications. Here it is, the 24H. So starting off, this is the first of three that I show that I'll, that I'll show you. This is the 24H made by Norscott in 2004. Uh, this did not have the highest level of detail, even for its time. It, it actually had a lot of downfalls associated with it. Um, I was 13 or 14 when this first came out. I remember purchasing it at a local hobby shop. And back then, I mean, obviously you had the internet, but you didn't have social media. You, you really weren't able to get a good look at a model before you bought it. Um, and I, I distinctly remember, you know, my dad driving me home and being so excited to unbox this and then take it, a look at these wheels. Do they not remind you of Lego style wheels? Just something you would not associate with an adult collectible scale model. To this day, it's something that's always irritated me. 
Um, so that is the Norscott 24H. But I mean, you had your blade that worked. Um, it is a it is a really hefty piece. There's a lot of die cast on this. Granted, there's a fair amount of plastic as well for the accent pieces. But for 2004, um, it is what it is. So, years later, I got even more excited when I saw Norscott was going to do an updated 24. So we went from the 24H to the 24M. They fixed a lot of things with the functionality. They fixed the cylinder problems. They fixed the, uh, the fender issues. They fixed the problems with the ripper. But here's what they didn't fix. They didn't fix the tires. I couldn't believe it. We're in 2009, 2010, and they still didn't fix our tires. Kind of a huge letdown. So, a few years later, when Diecast Masters announced that they were going to come out with an updated 24, and it was simply just going to be called the Cat 24, my expectations were super high, and I finally was not let down. So here is the most recent version to date, simply called the Cat 24, and this has the... Um, very similar to what the, the, the 24M had. And you'll see this with a lot of cat mining products. They call it the anti-glare paint on the mining model. So that's this black finish that's on the top. A lot of D11 dozers have it as well. But most importantly, the wheels now have a realistic tread design. And it's certainly suitable and more representative of a real Cat 24. You have tons of hydraulic Lions going to the, the cylinder in the back. You have a seven shank ripper. All of your hand and grab rails here are to scale. These up here are metal. The top comes off here to put your operator figure in. Moreover than that, I don't know how well this is going to come up on camera, but if I can guide your attention and look at the uh, display screen here, it's detailed out with information on it. Just a fantastic model. So if you're looking for really that conversation starter, uh, that centerpiece in your collection, especially, particularly if you're into mining equipment, you have a D11, maybe a 994, a uh, 797, but you want something to like maintain your haul roads on your diorama, get yourself a 24, and this is the one I would recommend. So there you go, collectors. That is my entire collection of 150 scale motor graders. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comment section below which of these models you have in your collection or perhaps which of these you would like to add to your collection. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next review.